Hi everybody, I would like to share with you my story about my use of photography in an art therapy context and how it has added years to my life. My name is Richard McLaren. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder in 1995, supposedly due to my tour of Vietnam in 1969-70. And I will start this journey from the first psychiatrist appointment and his words to me at that time were, you might as well go home, vegetate and die as there is no hope for your future. Just remembering at that 1995, very little was known about PTSD. What I'll be going through is, as you can see, is my lived experience since the post-diagnosis. Um, my searching for answers, taking that first step, and then I'll conclude with just what our therapy is um, and what therapeutic photography is. And uh, conclude with showing you some of the photos that I have taken during that um, since 1995 would you believe okay naturally I sought a second opinion through psychologists and other psychiatrists but my time was off as there was little professional knowledge available at the time and they seemed to only want to treat one symptom at a time PTSD having so many symptoms it was um, rather difficult for all the medical professionals to work on. During this time, I lost trust in the various professions and became despondent trying to understand what was happening and what I could do. It had become very difficult to think for myself and find somebody who understood. Lived experience was not a concept then. I had been trying to get back to work and DVA had an employment support program through Centrelink I went through all their vocational testing and interviews only to be told that I was overqualified for any job. What I had was a bachelor's degree and a teaching diploma. Um, I think they also saw that I had quite a lot of ex work experience uh, and world experience. So they couldn't do anything. In fact, the person from Centrelink offered me um, a position in a uni university in the States to do a, um, a PhD. It was really good because I my concentration levels were zero. At that time, I entered probably the lowest point in seeking recovery for myself. I attempted suicide and was saved by my dog. I spent many hours and days trying to analyse my situation and tried volunteering at an animal refuge centre. Managed to get some part-time teaching at TAFE but couldn't cope with the politics and the psychological bullying that they, and that they could not understand my attitude. I was desperate to tell my story, so I tried my hand at writing. Some success with non-academic non articles. Um, about my feelings and my tour of duty, but it was still not satisfying me. Um, people were starting to listen to my story, which was encouraging, um, but I was still not getting any satisfaction out of it. Uh, they were just words on paper. What I did next surprised even me. I picked up my camera again after several years of not using it, and it was the best thing I ever did. You can just picture somebody who is very depressed, very anxious, um, untrusting, um, having conspiracy theory thoughts going through the head. Um, I was at home on six acres. I would hide behind curtains and plot my escape route if anything was to happen I wouldn't answer the phone I wouldn't answer the door I wouldn't speak to anybody I had anxiety attacks if I went to a shopping centre 
and I was so I socially isolated myself. I would not stand talking to people in any way, shape, or form. It just happened at that time that there, the Brisbane Writers Festival was on, or it was about to begin anyway. And being an avid reader, I wanted to see if some of the authors that were attending, that we had international and Australian authors coming. Having no money to pay to go to their sessions, I rang the, the director of the festival and asked if I could attend the festival as a photographer. And in return for the photos, they would let me into any session that I wanted. They agreed. They didn't have a, a photographer for the festival. So in, tw in a 24 hour period, I went from a social, from social isolation to the festival's official photographer. Remember, I'm isolated at home. I'm not talking to anybody. I won't go out. So I went from that to spending the next seven days wandering between different speakers and being sociable in a crowd of over 3000 people a day. By the end of the festival, I had met many international and Australian authors, photographed them and provided them with a copy of, and their feedback was truly humbling. It did wonders for my self-esteem and confidence. And I felt I re had really taken a step in the right direction. And I was amazed it was all due to the camera. Um, the camera was now my weapon of choice. Um, this is a sort of a standing joke from an ex-service person. Um, it was my, now my weapon of choice. I could hide behind it and not be bothered by people. I truly had something to focus on external to myself. And I think with a lot of recovery, that is um, something that's really important, that you can find something that you can focus on. Um, where you're not thinking about yourself. Uh, two people inspired me to further pursue photography as my recovery therapy. Colin McCulloch was one, and Luke, who I'll introduce you to shortly, uh, who has a congenital disability. He was nonverbal, um, very large, large, very loud with noise. Um, and as I joke with him, he was like ugly as sin. Um, it probably frightens a lot of people. As you can see by this slide, that's a photo I took of Colleen at the festival. I sent her one just as a memento. And she wrote back and uh, ordered six more from me. Um, because she said her friends reckon she never laughs. And I had captured her laughing at her friend's joke at that particular time. She loved it. Luke, on the other hand, he was my first um, participant in a photographic course that I, I wrote because of him. Uh, he had poetry read out at, um, at the festival. He um, just had a smile on his face while he was listening to his um, support person reading the, the poetry out. And it was so descriptive and beautiful. I wondered whether he could take a photo of what he has written, whether he could capture the image of his words in a photograph. And I approached him later and asked if he had ever used a camera. And I was told, no, he'd never had a camera. So I arranged to meet his father and suggested to him that he should have a camera in his hand. Um, that he has some very wonderful pictures in his mind. And I want to know whether he could actually capture those pictures through photography. As you can see, he got a, he got a camera. And he absolutely loved it. And he was, um, his photos were very interpretive. And that was something that really pleased me because that's, that brought me into this therapeutic photography scene. 
Um, he absolutely loved photography. In fact, after each class, he would come up and he'd lift me off the ground in a bear hut just to thank me. And it was beautiful. Um, I wrote a course uh, to 12 hour, 12 hour course introduction to photography um, and presented it through Disability Services Queensland, the first one that Luke was on. Um, he came to three more on my dad just because he liked doing it. Same program. Um, he excelled along with the others. We had, I had a group of 12 people. Uh, eight of them were all with uh, reasonably severe disabilities, both physical and mental. And some people from the community. And it ended up that the people with the disabilities were helping the people from the community how to, how to use the camera. Um, they took to it like ducks to water. Um, and they knew the technicalities of it without really being told. It was great. Um, I have since taught over 400 uh, participants um, and they range from the disability services area to mental health issues to um, refugees who found the camera was um, a new form of language and they could communicate through the through the camera um, indigenous uh, taught a, um, a semester of art photography art at um, Himba Yumba, which is the local Indigenous school. Um, and people from the community who just happen to like photography. I can't call it a therapeutic photographic course simply because I'm not a therapist, so I can't use the word therapy. Um, to run a therapeutic photographic course, you have to be a registered and accredited therapist. All I'm missing is the piece of paper. So how, how does art therapy work? Art therapy has been around for a long time, um, where people offer um, painting, drawings, um, ceramics, clay work, um, all sorts of different art processes. And um, I think music is probably one of the most well-known and, and powerful forms of art therapy. Um, but I'm now putting photography in this in the same category. Um, it is quite powerful if it's used properly. Um, I'm not sure whether there are accredited art therapists who can uh, do the photography side of things. I know of other photographers that are running similar type courses uh, and having great success. Um, part of that success also is at the end of each of the courses, I organize an exhibition of their work and invite the local community and their family and friends to come along. And I get therapy out of seeing the looks on their faces when their photos are up on the walls and they're showing it to their, their friends and, and relatives. Um, it is so therapeutic just to see the look on their faces, the pride they have in, in saying, there's my piece up on the wall. I'm, I'm in a gallery, I'm, I'm, I'm exhibiting. Um, and it's I, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention a young guy who was a Down syndrome boy, who, when I first went to him, I, me I mentored him for a while in photography. He, I couldn't teach him anything. 
I would just discuss photography with him because after seeing his photos, he was technically perfect. <laughs> like, there's no other way of describing it. He knew what photography was all about. He knew about colour combination. He knew about um, the building blocks of a, of a photo as in shapes and, and uh, texture. Um, he knew the rule of thirds, just something that a lot of photographers use. Um, I had an exhibition of his work in Brisbane, and he had 55 pieces up on the wall. He put $50 on each one, just for the fun of it. He sold the 55 that night, and he had orders for another 20. He then got to be the uh, regular photographer for one of the local newspapers. So it can be quite useful. If that's a decent enough word. Um, there are many books on art therapy, and it can help people relax, provide an outlet for creativity, and assist in the recovery from various mental health conditions. Um, just show you some photos that I took. Um, I looked on for photography at the time as um, I've forgotten the word. Just a moment. Um, I wanted to know if I could analyse a photo after I took it and see if I could work out what was going on in my mind. These four photos are just an example of me seeing isolated, alone, frightened, relaxing, but by themselves. And that was exactly how I was feeling at the time. I felt very alone, very isolated. Um, and I didn't realize that until I saw all these photos later on. Um, in fact, a few years after I'd taken them on. Uh, it's, you take a photo of what's on your mind at the time. You don't realize it. It's your, more your subconscious that's coming out. Um, but these are good demonstrations of what my mind was going through at that particular time. Therapeutic photography, uh, that is a new concept. It's very much in its infancy. Um, it can become very technical. I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to say what my version is of therapeutic photography. Um, there are a lot of academic approaches to it. Um, I have read quite a number of articles where they define it quite differently. Um, starting off, of most of them are talking about the photo at the end, that that is the, the, the therapeutic part of it. And as you can see, my version relates to the process, not the end product. Um, it's that physically pressing the, the shutter button is where the endorphins go their merry way in your head and you feel pretty good about it. Um, because you and you alone have thought about where you want to go to take a photo, what you want to take a photo of, setting the shot up and composing it, and then pressing the button. And I found that I was more happy with just pressing the button than having a look at the photo at the end. So to me, that pressing of the button is the, the therapeutic part of photography. In conclusion, now this is a, this is a very short discussion. I can assure you. Um, 
it does allow you to, uh, excuse the pun in that, but it's the only way it can be put. Photography does allow you to focus on something new every day. As my father said to me, there is something to photograph every day of, the, of your life. And that stuck with me for a long time. It's also about focusing on things you don't normally focus on. Um, people walk around and they look straight ahead or to the side. They never look up, they never look down. And it's surprising what you miss. Take a walk through the botanical gardens one day and instead of just looking at the trunks of trees, have a look in the garden itself and see what's going on in there. Um, it's a safe and pleasing activity. You are on your own, you're making your own decisions. Um, nobody's telling you what to do. Um, and I remember being told about making a, a small goal each day, not a big one, aim for a small one each day. And I found out that every photo you take is actually a che an achievement of a one small goal. It is a communication tool and it covers every language. Um, I found that out through the, uh, the refugees that I taught. Um, they were actually doing a communication class at TAFE at the time and they said the photography has introduced us to a new language and it is actually helping us learn English. Um, but we also know that we can actually show you a photo and you will understand what we're talking about. And that's very true. Um, I have seen a, a, an autistic nonverbal boy start to communicate with his parents through the camera. Um, so it can be extremely powerful. It is a creative outlet, as I'm now finding. I've gone through back through something like 40,000 photos that I've taken over the years, and I'm now selling them. Um, and they've been quite successful, which I'm rather pleased about as well. Um, and it can tell your story. If you can't speak it, if you can't write it, you can actually show it in, in, in photographs. That's about it. Um, the following slides are... Uh, this one in particular, that was the first photo that I ever exhibited and sold. It happened to be taken in the botanical gardens, and the person that bought it was the head gardener, which I was rather pleased about. The bamboo makes a nice um, patterned type photo, very ordered and uh, strong. The Brisbane Powerhouse photo was has been very successful in, in sales. Um, my One Tree Hill at Armadale. Um, goes back to that loneliness and individual time that I had. And these are the latest. Um, it was only three or four weeks ago that I won second prize at the... Royal Queensland Art Society for the one on the on the left. That was taken in a toxic lake, and I was supposedly taking the dead trees in the fog. But as I panned around, there was this wonderful new green growth, which was contradictory to what I was taking. The butterfly is um, done through post processing. I took a photo of the butterfly lit up in the Roma Street Gardens at Christmas time. And I just played around with it on Photoshop, came up with that design. And the photo art, photo, yeah, the photo art, the smoke trails, um, that is just a colorized um, print of gray smoke coming off uh, an incense cone. Um, you take so many photos of the smoke as it rises um, and you get all sorts of images in it. 
Um, and that's probably the fav my favourite one, that one. Um, it has the look of a, a woman with her hands over her head. Um, that's been very popular too. So that's my story. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody about photography and mental health uh, because it has helped me and I've seen how it's helped quite a number of others. Um, and thank you. Um, and just remember that the images that you take really come from your own mind. Thank you.